Hey you guys, Andre Butler here in Detroit. Uh, excited to hang out with you guys today to go live with you. Uh, of course, check out my new FX hat. We, My team got tired of my uh, Tiger's hat and my Under Armour hat, so we kind of put something together for the time being. Um, but I'm excited about representing and uh, excited about the fact that it's actually warming up here in Michigan. So as of tomorrow, we'll actually be has some decent weather and can actually go outside <laughs> during this time. But anyway, I'm already just messing around. Uh, as you're joining us, let me know where you're joining us from and hi to all those who are catching us a little bit later. Uh, hey, April, how are you doing? It's been a long time. Good to connect with you. Hope your family's doing good. Um, I see Ronita's with us and Jules and Maddie and other people who spiritual deposits and Courtney with the new new little one. Hope you're getting some sleep, man. LaDonna, how are you doing? Doing wonderful in the ATL. I'm glad to hear it, April. I'm planning to be down there pretty soon myself. May have to catch up with you guys once all this is over. Hey, Lillian and Frank as well. And, um, you know, I actually use every day when we do this. I've uh, I've just taken the time to just kind of share a thought that I've had for the day. So I'm going to kind of jump in now where people are, are, are jumping on. And... Um, I saw a post this morning from, I want to say Dave Martin, and it basically was talking about don't um, don't live in the prison of your past. And I may not be saying it exactly right, but the idea was to not let what people did to you uh, affect how you interact with people going forward, not let what happened to you stop you from living the future God has for you. Our past can be hard to to get free from, and yet we have to do it. You just have to if you're going to live the future that God has for you. Um, This is true when it comes to dating. You know, sometimes people have done us wrong or even those of us who've been married and been through a bad marriage. Um, This is true sometimes when it comes to chasing dreams. Maybe you failed in the past. Maybe you failed a couple of times. Uh, You got to get back up again. The Bible says a just man falls seven times and rises up again. Uh, Maybe it's you know, you've maybe it's something to do with ministry. Uh, a lot of times as pastors or ministers, uh, you put your heart into helping people and developing people. And sometimes those are the very people that kind of stab you in the back. And then you don't feel like doing the same thing again with the next person. And you just can't let fear in any form uh, run your life. You cannot allow fear to keep you from the future God has for you. And that's really what we're talking about. When we're talking about becoming a prisoner of your past, fear. That's what's keeping you from trying again. That's what's keeping you from going forward is you're afraid I'm going to get hurt again. You're afraid I'm going to fail again. You're afraid this isn't going to work out. It didn't work out last time. It's not going to work out this time. And you've got to recognize God did not give you a spirit of fear. So if it didn't come from God, who did it come from? It came from Satan. Why would Satan cause try, try his best to cause you to be afraid of going forward, afraid of moving forward in a relationship or uh, in ministry or in a career or whatever area that you know you happen to be attacked in? It's because he knows that if you go forward, he's going to lose. So he's trying to abort God's future for you. By tricking you, deceiving you into being so afraid of failure that you don't even bother to try. So don't fall for that. Get out the boat again. If you sank last time, Jesus was there. He grabbed your hand. He picked you up. You walk back to the boat. Right. You're still here. And uh, so get out the boat again. Walk on the water again. Let God do something great through you. Learn from what happened in the past. But don't let it paralyze you. Don't let it keep you from the future that God has for you. So just a thought of the day, just something I was thinking about. Uh, hello to Demetric and Luana and Tina and Bree and uh, is that Flucky Luke and Vanessa and Valencia and Maze Francine and all of that. Thank you. Thank you. I'm loving it, too. I was just happy to get it. Um, uh, we are we were really blessed yesterday to have Catherine Egan with us. She really um, did a great job talking to us about our finance, particularly during this time. Today, we are really going to be blessed to have one of my really, really good friends on here, uh, Aaron Hankins. And uh, so I'm going to actually loop him in right now and uh, so we can get get going. And uh, Aaron, I thought I saw you earlier. If you would just kind of wave at me on here so I can just 
make it go live. We can go from there. But uh, I'm excited to have him on here in Louisiana. You know, we're cold up here in Michigan. I'm sure they're hot down there. So um, I'd be interested to hear about that, too. Hey, Rhea said, uh, oh, yeah, you enjoyed the Mom's Day's gift? Great. Okay, so there he is. And. There he is. Hey. hey, what's up, man? I am. How you doing, man? I'm doing good. How are you doing? Doing well. Doing well. It's good to see <laughs> your face. You too, man. I'm in my garage, so I'm trying to get this thing right here. Um, nice car. <laughs> you know what? It's not bad. You know, it's mm -hmm. all right. It gets me from A to B, all the way to Z, whatever. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, yeah, good to see you, man. How are y'all doing? We're doing well. How's your family doing? Uh, we're good. Um, trying to develop some sort of routine after all these weeks now it's still like you know a little bit off and a little bit different but um yeah we're well we're well kids just had a little little breakfast i know it's 11 o'clock here <laughs> but, but a little breakfast trying to get them to do some schoolwork devos uh -huh. stuff like that but yeah my, my yeah. oldest has been getting up in the morning going to school and then online and then yeah. going to bed and then she gets up like at five or six <laughs> and she stays up like till like two or three all night. Uh, yeah, that's her routine. And it's like, OK, <laughs> yeah, OK, we'll all roll right. with that. That's what's working, you know, know. so I said, all right, I'm not going to mess with you as long as we got a routine because it is important, you know, for yeah, kids right. in, in general. But but a lot of people that are connected with me know who you are. They know a lot about you, but not everybody does. Do you mind kind of sure. introducing yourself, letting people know a little bit about you? Um, sure. Yeah. Thanks again uh, for having me on. But um, yes, I pastor in Alexandria, Louisiana, and uh, me and my wife, Erin Cody, pastor together. And we've been uh, the lead pastors here since 07. So what's that? 13 years. Um, before that, we did student ministry eight or nine years here at this church while my parents pastored, uh, Mark and Trina Hankins. And so um, served under them, with them, and now they travel, and we've been pastoring, lead pastoring uh, the church here for a while. It's been good, and uh, done a lot of exciting, fun things, um, seen uh, God just show up big in a lot of different ways, but doing our best to reach our community, you know, uh, compared probably to Detroit, you know, where we're at, it's a smaller area, and you don't really realize it uh, once you're here or been here for a while till you fly out. You know, mm -hmm. you fly into a New York or Detroit or L.A. or somewhere, you know, and then you fly back home and it's like all there is is trees and lakes, you know, and that's our <laughs> airport right in the middle. And like oh, we mm -hmm. country, we country people <laughs> around here. Um, so but, yeah, we've done our, our best to reach our community, serve our community, you know, and do what God's called us to do right here. And so I like something I heard. I think it was Jensen Franklin. He said the Lord was going to give him a pulpit to the world mm -hmm. right where he was. And mm -hmm. so. I feel like the Lord's, you know, wherever he's called you to be, you know, be who he's called you to be there. And so we, we're doing our best to do that. So we got three kids, Avery, Macy, and Jude. Um, Avery's 16 years old. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, anyway, about to get her license. Supposed to be getting her license right now, but the DMV's closed. So right. it's not, oh. that's, not, that's not too bad, though. That's all right. She's not happy about that. <laughs> no. Um, so, uh, and then we have another daughter named Macy Claire. I call her my brown eyed beauty cause she has brown eyes. She's the only one of our kids that has brown eyes, brown hair like I do. Um, and then I have a son, Jude, he's 12. And so anyway, trying to get him off, uh, all the gaming and all that just to do some schoolwork and mm -hmm. <laughs> stuff, but yeah, the Lord's been good to us. So been been you married guys, like, 20 years. Yeah. Anyway. And you guys just opened another campus, right? Just maybe, uh, what, in, the, in the last year, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we were, oh my gosh. Uh, anyway, it's a process mm -hmm. um, as far as getting the campus. We did uh, portable for a year, portable church on a Sunday night in this town. It's called Pineville. It's right across the river from us, mm -hmm. about 20 minutes away. And so set up, tear down, set up, tear down, set up, tear down. You know how that goes. A lot of you do know what that's mm -hmm. like. Um, um, I have much more compassion for people who are doing that and have done it for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, me too. But yeah, <laughs> it's some real work for everybody. Um, but anyway, uh, yes, we launched there um, September of what, 18, I guess. Mm -hmm. And so we did that for about a year with the plan. We bought a building. That's right. We you guys launched when we launched. I remember yeah, that. Yeah, same. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. 
we thought we would be in that building, our, our building that we purchased right there on Main Street in Pineville, great location, but we thought we'd be in it in like six months. And anyway, a lot of red tape, a lot of things to deal with, work through. Didn't end up getting in the building until this, uh, this what is this? I'm sorry, this year is mm-hmm. crazy. Yes, it is. <laughs> until uh, 2020. So we've only, we were only in it for a few weeks. We had a grand celebration launch, big deal, mm-hmm. and it's going really well. Um, and then, of course, now all this is happening. And so we haven't met there yet again for a few months, but mm-hmm. yeah, so we launched that campus there. It's doing well. It's a smaller town than Alexandria. Mm-hmm. It's only like 14 or 15,000 people there. Um, but we were having, you know, uh, 150, 200 people there. Mm. Um, so that's good for that location yeah. and, uh, looking to multiple services there, reach five or 600 people from that, that spot. And then, you know, continue to do what we do in Alexandria. So, um, yeah, that, that's been exciting. That was something that was in our heart for a few years, took some time to kind of, and it's a different way of thinking, you know, from Mm -hmm. traditional church. And, and then of course the, the why or the reason why you're doing it, you know, for me, that was a big deal. Um, Mm -hmm. not just doing it because it's the thing to do, you know, because a lot of great churches doing great things like, we'll just do that because that's what they're doing. But actually having like a word or a, something yeah. in your heart that the Holy Spirit's leading you to do. Right. Cause the truth is, you know, anything that you do, if the Lord hadn't led you to do it, you're going to hit a tough spot at some point. Mm-hmm. And at that point you had better have some solid ground to stand on. Right. And know that this isn't just like, Hey, a good idea or, you know, Hey, this is a fad or something that people are doing. So let's try it. It's really something that's like the Lord put in our heart to do. So we will fight tooth and toenail when it get when the tough gets going, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? And stand mm-hmm. on the word and that sort of thing. So, yeah, so it's been fun launching that campus. Of course, we're looking forward to get back to it, mm-hmm. right. um, <laughs> but it's good though. So what's, what's been on your heart about all this time? I mean, is anything God's been talking, talking to you about in regards to this pandemic or this year or. So, okay. So there's a, a couple sides to this for me. There's, uh, opinions that, that I have mm-hmm. concerning all this. And I won't give you all of those because um, there's a <laughs> lot of different sides to this. Um, I will tell you what the Lord kind of put on my heart at the beginning of the year before this and kind of what's been the focus in the middle of it for mm-hmm. me, you know? Um, so at the beginning of the year, I, I preached a series um, called three things that last forever, you know, mm-hmm. and it was from first Corinthians 13. And at the very end, it says, these three things remain forever, faith, hope, and love. That's good. Yeah. And so I was like, okay, so if these three things last forever, then these three things are super crucial, super important. If these three things are kind of in the, the DNA of what you're doing in your life, then this will be something that will have you doing things that, that are eternal, that right. matter. You know, and so obviously there's faith. So I kind of kind of phrased it this way, and I will live by faith in 2020. Mm-hmm. And so obviously, you know, we know what that means, but, and it's huge, you know, as far as feeding our faith, speaking words of faith, right. you know, taking steps of faith, all of that. And then the second was hope. And of course, um, for that, the Lord just kind of reminded me of Romans where it says, you know, that we can abound in hope by the power mm-hmm. of the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. And so I'm like, all right, so I'm going to abound in hope in 2020, meaning mm-hmm. that my expectation, what I'm looking to, what I'm expecting moving forward is going to be filled with the God kind of hope, right? Mm-hmm. Which is, you know, something good that God has prepared ahead of me that I'm looking right. forward to stepping into. Of course, r- right now in the middle of all of this, mm-hmm. that's a that's a big deal, right? You know, so it's, a, it's kind of a different thing to preach in January, where it's like we're going to bound in hope, 2020. Right. You know, right. Ooh, it's going to be awesome. It's another thing for people who've been sitting on their couch for three weeks and like, oh, my God, are we, are we ever going to get out of this? <laughs> right. You know, um, so that that was big and it's still big. Um, the third thing was obviously love, mm-hmm. which is big. And of course, all that that entails is massive right now, too. Right. Um, so that's been something that's that that I've kind of like kind of gone back to a few times. Mm-hmm. Um, something else that I've kind of had all throughout the years is Psalm five, three. Mm. And it just says my voice, you shall hear in the morning. And it says, Lord, I'll direct it to you and I'll look up. Mm-hmm. And so the past two weeks, you know, obviously with all the news, all the Facebook posts, all yeah. the stories, that's good. The, the Lord just kind of reminded me, you know, pay attention to what has your attention. Mm. 
pay attention to what has your attention. And so, okay, yeah, I'm going to get my news. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to watch our governor's address. I'm going to see where we're at, what's going on. But my primary focus and what's going to have my attention isn't going to be all of those things mm-hmm. because of what they're feeding. You said it as you were you starting today, like you're, fe- you know, there's so much fear, so much that people are dealing with. Right. And people can get in that place because of what they're feeding on so much, you know, right. And it's so easy right now, but okay. Am I going to give attention to the things that are going to feed my faith that are going to produce hope Mm -hmm. that are going to help me to walk in love with myself, with others, with my family. Okay. So that's been big. Um, And then the last thing I'll just mention this is um, I'm in the middle of a series right now called essentials. And yes. so obviously that's a big word right now. What's essential, what's not essential, whose job is essential, what's not, whose job's not essential. Of course, you know, uh, if it's your job, it's essential to you. Okay. Right, so right. It's exactly. one perspective, you know, it's like, <laughs> don't tell me my job's not essential. I got to pay my bills. Right. Um, so, I mean, there's that side of it. Um, but then of course, that's what makes everybody's thinking about, you know, so you think about even when you go to the grocery store, you know, or ordering your groceries online, what is essential? What really matters? Mm -hmm. You know, like milk, bread, toilet paper, uh, hair clippers, you know, all the things that uh, different in different seasons, different things have been essential. You know, it's like, okay, now we need haircuts, you know, now we need, you know, something needs to get straight. Mm -hmm. Um, so then the Lord kind of bring you back. And I guess it kind of ties into what the Lord, you know, emphasized to me earlier in the year, which is, okay, what really matters, you know, what matters right now. And so I kind of went yeah. back to, okay, my faith matters. Right. Being in a, being in a place of peace. Uh, matters. That's good. Yeah. Right. You know, my, and you know, Jesus said, you know, my peace, I leave with you. Basically he was telling his disciples, this is going to be essential. You're going to need this. And obviously when you, we know the story the, of all the things that we're going to deal with, what they're going to face, you right. know, the persecution and the challenge and the difficulty. Of course, we think what we're going through now is a big deal. But what if you were back then and there when they're facing some hardcore persecution, their right. life's on the line uh, all the time, you know, so maintaining peace in the middle of that and knowing that the source of that peace is Jesus and a relationship with him, abiding in him, mm-hmm. um, remaining him. So that's essential. Um, this Sunday, you know, and this is going to be a little different, but I'm, I'm going to share like our praise is essential. What our praise mm-hmm. does, mm-hmm. what's coming out of our mouth and what that produces in our life. So, I mean, obviously you can preach, you know, the rest of your life on what's most important and what's essential, but that's kind of what's been, you know, I think what's been really good about this season is people having to kind of like, right. Hone down what really matters. In right. Life, you know? Right. So. I, yeah, I totally agree. It's, it's given a, an opportunity for us to kind of reset ourselves and reset our priorities and um, on another good word, be maybe reposition ourselves, right? So that we yeah. can get better results in the future than what we've had in the past. And it's funny because the Lord gave me a message at the end of the year last year that everything's, that it's going to be all right. Mm. And, um, yeah. you know, I, and for, you know, that it was going to be all right. And then it's going to be all right by the end of the year. <laughs> oh, that's and good. so, you know, when he gave me that message, same thing as what you mentioned. You know, I've got the message. I knew some things were going on. I thought it was just for our church. Yeah, I had no right. idea that we would hang on to that in yeah. the middle of something like wow. this. I mean, I think this is the kind of thing that it's like nine eleven, and that we'll we'll look we'll look back twenty years for from sure. now and say, "You remember the quarantine? You remember, you know, COVID nineteen? But God spoke ahead of time, absolutely. You know, and I think He's using this time. He didn't cause it but I think he's using it to kind of right. get us back to the, the things that are really important. Yeah. Um, family time, you know, even that, I think that yeah. I've seen my kids so much, that people are tired <laughs> yeah. of them, you know? <laughs> yeah. And my, my kids have said, are we going to have family night every night? I mean, do we have to have family night. Every? And I'm like, what's the problem? I mean, you know, popcorn in the movie and games and like, yeah, we need a little space from you. you know? uh, <laughs> I, 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 I get it, you know, but it's true. Though. I think it's good. Yeah, yeah. My oldest is like, when this is over, I'm not going to see y'all for a month. Like, Fine, you know, I'm offended, you know. <laughs> you know, I feel the same way. So. Right, right. Okay, so, but it's been good, you know. It's time that we had a chance to to hang out and maybe increase prayer time a little bit. I know for me, I've been able to pray a little bit more, yeah. read a little bit more. Not that I, I'm still been working just as much or maybe more than normal, but yeah. not having to even get in the car and drive. Sure. You know, or jump on a plane or any of that stuff saves time. So I think that there's 
there is something to um you know to the idea yeah. of kind of getting back to the basics and and then when this is over not just going back like a crazy man right to, you know what what maybe wasn't working before right i think we would and i think we would miss it if we didn't come through this different in mm -hmm. a better way, in a good way, not mm -hmm. different, like depressed or different, right. like, ah, uh, you know, lost everything or, you know, but different in our spiritual depth or, right. you know, I think there's, it's such a great opportunity and it has its challenges, no doubt about it. Right. Um, but um, there's a, there's a depth that's available um, in your walk with God. And I don't mean depth, like in a weird way, but like just authentic relationship with God that's available mm -hmm in in a more consistent way you mm -hmm. know and so i know you i know you like sports i know you mm -hmm. like watching the games you know i know you go to the uh lions games and the pistons games and, mm -hmm. and my wife's from detroit area so I, those are those teams are on my list they're not at the top of my list <laughs> they're, right. they're on my list you know top five teams that we enjoy um you know so like in a time like this obviously you know i'd be watching the NBA playoffs probably right. every night till yeah. 11, 12, if it's a West yeah. coast game, maybe one, mm -hmm. you know? And so, and I certainly miss that. I do miss that. But on the flip side, it's kind of like, well, it's kind of nice to have the openness mm -hmm. every night. And then mm -hmm. I, not that I'm not looking forward to getting back, but you know, even that side of it's been like, you know, it's kind of nice that it's, you know, it's just wide open. And, right. you know, uh, I think it's been good in a lot of yeah. ways. And it's going to help us appreciate some things better more too, <laughs> right? <laughs> I think you're right. I yeah. think you're right. What's funny is I have, t I had tickets for a Pelicans game, Lawrence Pelicans game, you know, mm -hmm. uh, for, I don't know, sometime in April, you know, and it's like, doggone it, man. I was ready to go, <laughs> yeah. ready to go see Zion, Zion, you know. Wow. We're going to bring our whole family with spring break. And yeah. Anyway. That's a small petty thing, honestly, yeah. in, the, in the light of all this. But still, it's kind of like, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. Even if they go back, we probably won't be able to go. So Right, right. Yeah, so good, that's though. right. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing about Steph Curry coming here. I had looked at a date on the calendar. I was like, hmm. Yeah. Well, Ooh. that didn't happen. I'm glad it didn't yeah. buy those tickets. <laughs> yeah, I know. But. I haven't got my refund yet. So I'm like, Ooh, come on, guys. <laughs> yeah. About time. I get that. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I really do. I am excited about um I'm excited about the future. I think that we've had a I don't know if you've seen those prophecies about even from like nineteen eighty six how a great awakening would come out of this moment. Um, you know, somebody prophesied this whole thing. And um and I think that something started. And I think something started in the church. I, I yeah. Love how you go online every Sunday and it's like we've literally taken over. Yeah, every true. platform is <laughs> like the local yeah. center is in the hands of the just. We're using it right now, right? That's right. Um, I think something has started, and uh, as part of why I've been so busy is literally looking at, okay, what's life going to be afterwards? How do we position our ministry? I mean, I've been working on okay, digital church is clearly not going away. Um, you know, right. it, it's not that we're not going to be live clearly, but I think that the prominence right. of church online and how easy it is how scalable it is right uh is it's become apparent um and i think that there's real potential in it you know so it's definitely something that has me excited you know and 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 looking forward so i, I like the, the point of hope because it doesn't feel yeah. like there's anything to hope for but yeah. i actually think and i think god spoke this to my dad he, he shared this maybe a couple of weeks ago that things will be better after than they yeah. were before Come on, and and I believe that. I believe things can be better after for those of us that are following God than they were before. So, I well, I mean, life. that's so good, and I, I, uh, I really, there's a few things I've I come across. I just to do my daily reading, I came across Philippians, and I was just doing my Bible reading. I came across Philippians, and I read one part where Paul was saying that this. You know, he was in prison as he's writing this. You're in jail, and mm -hmm. he writes, and he just says, "What it? <laughs> he's quarantined, <laughs> right. exactly." And he says, the things that have happened to me, this is, this blew me away when I read it. I mean, it's not like I hadn't read it before. It's like Philippians 1.12. He says, the things that have happened to me have actually turned out for the furtherance of the gospel. Mm -hmm. He says that have turned out. And then That's in verse good. 19, he says, this will turn out for my deliverance right. through your prayers and, and the supply of the spirit. So I'm thinking, Ooh, like this thing's going to turn out. It's kind of like what you're saying. It's all right. going to be all right. Like this is going to turn out 
for good and right. God's working it. Obviously I don't, I don't believe like he caused this, but um, I feel the same way. Like this will turn out for the good. And honestly, I know there's, okay. And there's a couple sides to this. I know this was, is not turning out good for some people, right? but I believe for the church, those mm-hmm. whose faith is in Jesus, who he is their cornerstone, mm-hmm. his promise is what they are standing on. This will turn out for their good. Right. For the furtherance of the church, the gospel, um, the church of the living God. I really believe that. And the enemy, I've, I was preaching this, I don't know, earlier on in the middle of this. And I just felt like, man, all this is going to backfire on the mm-hmm. enemy. Yeah. It's like, he's, yes. this yep. is going to backfire. And yes. I, the next season is, is, I feel, is connected to what you said um, for our church and the church. And it's the... Now the word revival, like mm-hmm. we are about to step into something that is, mm-hmm. is so genuine and authentic. And I, I'm for, you know, me and I'm for like doing church the best way you can do it. You right. know what I mean? Our screens, we have an led wall, we got lights, mm-hmm. we got smoke. We want our sound to be the absolute best it can possibly be. You know, all those things. I want to mm-hmm. preach a great message. I want it mm-hmm. to make sense. I want it to hit people where they're at all of that. But I, I do believe there's something coming out of this that is going to be so raw, so authentic, so passionate. The worship, the right. preaching, it's it's going to be more authentic, not that it wasn't good before, but more authentic than refined. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? More yeah. than like, that was a pretty message. You're like, you're like that, was, that was legit. Like, that right. was for real right there. Right, right. So that's what I feel. I feel the same thing you do, man. Yeah, I'm excited about that. Yeah, and then that day that everybody gets back to church and they're comfortable, that's going to be like, yeah, yeah. Just, just don't even look at the clock. Just <laughs> I know, it's going to be like the Brooklyn Tabernacle Choir singing in there and <laughs> rolling and around, you know. So, it's you know, great. it's going to be good. This and, ooh, I don't know. If, ah, we, I can say this. Um, we talked to our team last night because, you know, our our state enters phase one starting Friday. Mm-hmm. And so the whole time uh, we've been talking with our team, you know, Aaron, Cody and I about we're going to be in the front lines of going back, you mm-hmm. know, whatever that looks like, however we got to do it. Mm-hmm. We're going to be in the front lines. It may not be perfect. You know, mm-hmm. it may not be even full, you know, mm-hmm. uh, but we're going to be on the front lines. So, you know, this Sunday, you know, we're going back. Like we're mm-hmm. we're having church, and and so it's going to be different. And mm-hmm. I'm sure some people will stay home. Some people probably need to stay home. You know, if they're mm-hmm. concerned about their health or issues, you know, that's fine with us. And we're fine with wherever people are at. Whatever, right. if they want to keep watching online for a few weeks, if they need to, we're fine with that. Um, but for us, we're like, Hey, you know, if it's just 25% that we can have in there, if it's every other row, if it's three seats apart, if it's whatever it's gotta be, um, we're going to jump in on it and, mm-hmm. t- you know, and I found out, you know, we've all found out apparently everybody has an opinion. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone has an MD after their name and everybody right. has, you know, I was like, wow, I didn't know everybody knew so much. Right. Um, myself included. You're like, I feel like this, this, and this, and this. And I'm like, right. Man, I got a bachelor's degree in church business administration. <laughs> you know, like, uh, I don't, have, you know, I'm not a qualified necessarily, but, mm-hmm. um, so we feel like in each phase and each thing that we've done, you know, it's been like, we're willing to take the heat for whatever it is. If we feel like it's the right thing for us for that week. Mm-hmm. And it's week by week for everybody. I think right. in different right. parts of the country, it's different, you know, right. if you're in California or New York or, you know, Detroit or in New Orleans, you know, different places are different, uh, you know, but for us, we're like, you know what, if we feel like it's the right thing to do, we're going to do it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there'll be some who say, he'll say, you know, you should have never stopped. There'll be some who say, right. you shouldn't go back for six more months. They're, I mean, everybody's going to say something, right. but, and I'm willing to take whatever it is, if we feel like it's the right thing the Lord said for us to do. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, anyway, I understand. I understand. Well, th- thank you for hanging out with us today and uh, excited about what God's doing there and what he's going to do. And you make sure to tell, her- tell everybody we said hi. I will. And, um, you know, get ready for another driver. Actually, it's pretty wonderful. You'll find. <laughs> it, <laughs> you know what? Is. I think you're right. Go get some yeah. groceries. Go to the store. Yes. It's, it's actually pretty wonderful outside of a little bit of complaining. But then it's like, hey, I bought that car. So, that's you know, right. Just go you ahead got the car. You got to do what I tell you to do. So That's right. But, uh, but, man, we love you guys. 
Um, thank you, everybody, for joining in with us as well. Tomorrow we have Dathan Thickpen, and uh, excited about that, too, at noon. And, um, you know, God's got a future for you. That's right. Hey, I love the beard, man. Looking good. Oh, thank Looking you. Good. Thank I you. like it. Thank <laughs> you. I'm working on it. Working. Uh, I'm finally looks, doing a little something. So hey, we'll see, we'll see what I we can't end up. do it. I can't do it, but you got it. <laughs> Thanks. All right. I'll see you later. Yes, sir. Bye-bye.